Give you a quick demonstration of Rancher Desktop. Uh, this is the Mac version. Rancher Desktop is also available for Windows. To get started, once Rancher Desktop is launched, you can get to its preferences by clicking on the icon in the tray at the top and clicking on Preferences. You'll also see there's Kubernetes contexts, which will let you switch between your different contexts as the context for all of your tools like kubectl, home, and whatnot. Preferences takes you into the Preferences screen, where you can configure Rancher Desktop. Kubernetes settings will let you dig into the settings, and that's the place where you can do things such as choose um, from many different versions of Kubernetes to run. Uh, you get to choose your version right down to the patch level, so that way your development environment can mirror production or um, your QA environments or whatnot. On Mac, you can also choose the size of the virtual machine that Linux is running in, because we run Kubernetes in Linux. And you can see here that you can reset your environment. So if you ever just want to blow everything away and come back, you can reset Kubernetes, or you can reset Kubernetes and container images. And I'll explain what that is in just a minute. And you can link tools into your path here. In this case, you can see Helm, Kim, kubectl, and Nerdy Control. And we'll cover Nerdy Control in just a minute. That's kind of the basic settings for Rancher Desktop that you might want to use to configure your environment. Now let's go ahead and take a look at it in action. Now many people are used to using a CLI to run applications or to build images or that kind of thing. Let's take a look at something like that. So here in my terminal, I can go ahead and run an application, say Nginx. And here we've started up Nginx. Nginx is now running as a container and port 8000 on my local host, or actually on, on Mac it's 0.0.0.0 is exposed, so it exposes on many interfaces, is exposed to port 80 in an Nginx container. And it's running it in the background. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what comes up. And if we go ahead and load it, you can see Nginx is exposed right on localhost. Because that's one of the things that'll happen here, is it'll expose it. Now, this looks just like running a Docker command, and it is the same syntax. And you can do other things with nerdy control, such as build an image. And in this case, I have an application and it's building it. And it should look like that normal syntax you see in other tools because under the hood, they use the same libraries and packages to build these container images. And so here we went ahead and built something. And if we wanted to see what was running, we can see what's running. We can see that container that we launched here. Now, what you may notice is we have Kubernetes running and you're not seeing the Kubernetes containers happen. And that's because uh, Nerdy Control is the CLI to give you that same Docker-like experience with Container D. And Container D has its own namespaces that are separate from Kubernetes namespaces, and that's where Kubernetes runs. And here I can actually see everything running inside of Kubernetes now. Now we do have Kubernetes up, it's running, it's working. And if we want to see, say, uh, all my pods, we can go ahead and see the pods running in that cluster. Right now it's just a, an empty cluster with nothing in it, but if I wanted to install something in it, such as if I wanted to use Helm to install something, we'll install WordPress as an example. And here you will have WordPress installed into that local Kubernetes cluster running on your local system. And you'll see it there. And we can see the pods as they're being created and the images are being pulled and whatnot. Um, and so you have a local Kubernetes and container management environment running right on your local machine. And this will work on Mac and Windows. Thanks for listening.